Warning! Fighting for the Faith YouTube videos contain spiritually volatile content. The material you are about to see is not suitable for those with itching ears or those dependent on subjective emotional experiences or anyone for that matter. We at Pirate Christian Media are not responsible for feelings of disillusionment or disappointment with your man-centered, mamby-pamby, seeker-sensitive church. Compensation for listeners who have wasted precious time that will never get back listening to their pastor's narcissistical sermons or serving in their church's redundant and ineffective ministries will not be provided. For any and all complaints, please email us at just open your Bible and read it at statingtheobvious.com. Welcome to another installment of Dumpster Fire. Now, this is a mini Dumpster Fire that we will be doing today. We're heading over to uh, Redding, California, Bethel Church, and we're just going to look at what I would consider to be a representative sample of the sound biblical theology and biblical scholarship and great doctrine that's so beautifully shown from the scriptures that that well often take takes place at the stage of Bethel Church in <clears throat> Redding, California. And you'll note the there's some sarcasm there because Bethel isn't known for their sound doctrine. They're not known for their biblical scholarship. They're not known for their doctrinal fidelity. Far from it. So back in March of this year, they invited, well, Georgian Bonoff to uh, come and grace their stage and regale them with his stories of his exploits in the spirit. And uh, I hope you're sitting down because this one's going to be entitled. <laughs> yeah, we've already kind of worked out the title for this one. Um, Dumpster Fire, Heavy Hemorrhoid Issues. Yeah. And we're going to bust the chops of Georgian Bonov, who does some decreeing and declaring as it relates to uh, the, the town of Reading. And we'll take a look and, and just do some verification regarding his prophetic declarations to see if they came true. So let's whirl this up. Hope you're sitting down. Uh, drinking straws, padding, duct tape, bendy straws, things like that. Uh, yeah, those will all help. Tinfoil pyramid hat may be uh, in order here. But uh, we're over at um, George and Bonoff's uh, Vimeo account. And uh, this was the sermon, or part of the sermon he delivered at Bethel in March of this year. Here we go. Thank you. I mean, Romania is gyps gypsies, just three million gypsies. Bulgaria has many, so, so one of his favorite people, and they're mainly... Now, he's going to talk about a city in Bulgaria and make claims that uh, no one's verified yet, but uh, everyone there at uh, Bethel will be clapping and applauding. Yeah, the claims that he'll be making. Garbage collectors and, and uh, they, they're hard workers, actually, or, or cherry pickers or something like that. Or in Bulgaria, they're the rose, rose pickers because Bulgaria, in the middle of Bulgaria, is the ra largest rose valley of, of, of rose of the world, and all French perfume comes from Bulgarian roses. And, and, and gypsies are the pickers. And it's a hard work. You can only pick r r for rose oil between like four or five in the morning when the dew comes. And once the sun comes up and the dew is evaporated, that's it. There's, there's no more oil. Oil, the rose oil is inside the dew. And so as soon as the, the dew got, comes up at four o'clock or so, they start picking fast and dark and it, it just, it's hard work. Anyways, it's her favorite people. I say her, it's mine too, but I've adopted them because she's in love with the poorest of the poor. And 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 uh, so we go there every year. And now he's talking about his wife, Winnie. This particular neighborhood, that I mean, violent neighborhood. I mean, selling women of pimps and drug lords and so on and so forth. Violent. And and yet there's a, a little church there that uh, just love Jesus. And they, in '95, we brought this corporate anointing. Jo yeah, that would be the so-called Toronto blessing. I had love and, you know, intoxication in Holy Spirit. How many love that? Where in the Bible does it talk about intoxication in the Holy Spirit? 
and it actually doesn't say that in the day of Pentecost. Neither Peter nor any of the other apostles who were filled with the Spirit, you know, with tongues of fire on the day of Pentecost, were actually behaving in a drunken fashion. Mm-hmm. Woo! You know, you don't bother me to get intoxicated any time. It doesn't interrupt me at all. Or if you rejoice or anything. What, in, what bothers me more is like... So go ahead and just get intoxicated in the Spirit any time you like there at Bethel you know, while Georgian is teaching because you know, he would rather have you do that than what he's demonstrating right now. No, I'm kidding. I don't care what you do. <laughs> I'm just too drunk to care. Anyway, anyway. I'm just too drunk to care. Yeah, f fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. Apparently he's lost that. Oh, so, so the, the, the leader of this little church, I mean, it was all Muslim, uh, the whole neighborhood, uh, just, just on fire for Jesus, and he loved this anointing and and so he says, come to our neighborhood and give us this, this blessing, you know. And so we did. And it hit this young leader, and the whole little church just exploded. And, and because we, we do every night meetings. I mean, part of this anointing is intoxicated and addictive. You are intoxicating and an addictive anointing. Where in the Bible are we led to expect that God the Holy Spirit would do that? You're addicted to his presence. I'm not joking. This is your brain. Thank God for you, because it would be a lonely night. Imagine tonight without this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Bill, for, for stirring it, for, for wanting it, for encouraging it. Wow. And, and, and so, anyway, so we, since this anointing has fallen, we minister every night because people are hungry for this every night. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And now there's people somewhere in the back there completely losing it and just laughing uncontrollably. With these crazy students. I mean, they don't, they're just riotists, you know? And, and, and I, whoo, you should see our school. It, it, it takes, it takes, it's kind of like, you know, when they do the rugby or the football and the piles, that's what happens during the worship. And it takes 10 to 15 minutes to get them to their chairs. And, 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 and it's kind of a dilemma. Heaven forbids to stop. Okay, stop it. Get up and go there. No, he can't do that. And in fact, if Winnie teaches, she says, oh, you're fine here, I don't care. So she's just preaching away. Anyways, this church in this neighborhood worship every night, guys, for since 96, every night. Woo! Oh, like to over 20 years now. And guess what? The presence of God has camped not in the, the little church in the middle of the neighborhood, but on the entire neighborhood. So the whole neighborhood, you know, God's presence camps there. You know, think like Book of Exodus kind of stuff. Is, is, is the presence a, a p p pillar of fire by night and cloud by day? You know, do you guys have a tent of meeting and stuff there? And as a result, crime... Ended. Drug lords are gone. No more selling women. So there's no crime anymore in that neighborhood of Bulgaria. We don't know the name of the town, so we can't verify this claim. No more selling children. No more doing drugs. Gone. All gone. All gone. And the police... Now, this is in a city record. I'm not exaggerating. In a police... In a city record, the police have not gone in their neighborhood for 20 years. Yeah, what's the name of the town? I'd like to talk to the police there. That's what the presence of God does. So I'm just releasing. You're doing that. You're changing the city. But I'm just, I'm just agreeing with you that, that, that Reading will be a no, 
no crime zone. No crime zone, no crime zone. Freedom from crime. Releasing the presence of the Lord. Releasing the simplicity of praise, of worship. All right, so he released that back in March. Now, uh, today did a little bit of research and uh, found the Reading Police Department's uh, website. I actually had the opportunity to speak to the uh, administrative assistant, uh, to Roger Moore, the chief of police there. And what was fascinating uh, was that I, sent, I told her I was a member of the media, told her I was with Pirate Christian Media, and that we were doing... Uh, a follow-up uh, to a claim regarding, uh, you know, a prophetic declaration that was made in March over at Bethel, and I said, I just have one question to ask, and that is, is that, is Reading now a crime-free zone? And um, she kind of chortled and guffawed uh, in with incredulity, and, uh, I, you know, I literally invited the chief of police on to uh, this program, and he, he, he decided not to come on the program, but his administrative assistant said, on our website, there is a crime map. And the crime map breaks down all of the crimes that have been reported in Reading by month, and you can actually see what type you know, it is. And so when you click on the, so you know, we're at the uh, cityofreading.org, and you click on their crime map, let me show you what comes up. So you see, it's, you know, kind of a Google Earth looking thing here, the Reading crime map. And and let me zoom in. Let, let me zoom in to the city of Reading. So, you know, you, you don't think that we're up to anything nefarious. There's the city of Reading from the Reading crime map. And uh, when you click on the stacks, you know, you can look at crime you and it's broken out. So uh, let's take a look at like February... Sounds like the city of Chicago. Anyway, um, we, we'll look at the at the at the month of February, the the month before uh, they they released this uh, declaration that uh, Reading was going to be crime free. And you'll note you can click on the different things here. You know, on uh, on February sixth at two a.m. there was a theft, and you you kind of get the idea of where it took place. It was another theft there. And then, it, well, look, on the 17th, there was an aggravated assault. Uh, here we've got a, a vehicular theft. And, and you'll note, I mean, it, it just really looks like there's a lot of criminal activity uh, that went on there in February of this year. Now, the, 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 the declaration by Georgian Bonoff was on was in March. So, you know, let's let's check April. Huh. Um, okay, um, let's check May. May should be crime-free, because Reading is now a crime-free zone. Let's, let's check, um, well, yeah, May is, wow, there's a lot going on in May there, too. Um, how about June? I'm sure by then, you know, that they, they, they were a crime, no, not at all. Um, wow, so, I mean, let's take a look at the June stats here, shall we? Let's see here. R. There was a robbery on June 18th at 2 a.m. And then uh, on that street, petty theft over there. That, that looks like a car theft to me. Why is the house there? Oh, there was a burglary at someone's house on June 9th. Um, another car theft, a motor vehicle theft on June 5th. Um, boy, there is a lot of activity there. In fact, it I didn't hear anything. And I asked... Uh, the administrative assistant to the chief of police there. Again, his name is Roger Moore. Uh, no relation to uh, the guy who played 007. But uh, Roger Moore's assistant, I asked if would there be any layoffs any anytime soon now that uh, Reading is a crime-free zone. And she thought I'd lost my mind. So, again, this is just statistical data that, you know, it like – your data that's available on the website for the city of Reading. And I was pointed to this by the chief of police 
uh, who uh, has definitively uh, helped us come to the conclusion that since the release of this prophetic declaration that uh, Reading would be cry- a crime-free zone in March, that it has that de- prophetic declaration has not come to pass. Ah! Hmm. You know, just saying. But uh, let's uh, return now to uh, Georgian Bonoff as he continues. And uh, this is where it gets really nutso. And we're going to take a hard left into Cuckoo Banana Town as if we're not already there. But here we go again. Of a duration. Oh, I just, I just release. You to go out in the streets and just worship. This is wonderful. This is training ground, but go out. Go out and worship on any corner. Just get your guitar and just, just sing. And, or from door to door, it doesn't matter. Just like a caroling on Christmas, just sing all. Worship, that's what she makes us do. She makes us bring out instruments and, and just serenade. Wow. So, so I'm just... I want to play this video if you want to see and see yourself coming with us if you're into that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, we worship. So this is a recruiting uh, lecture on his part. He wants people to come to his school, you know, in uh, in Romania, Bulgaria area. Everywhere, everywhere. We worship in 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 the in the West Banks. We worship in 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 uh, in inside hospitals where the wounded soldiers in Israel. We worship inside army bases. We do, just like this. Come on. The kingdom of God is invading. Do you know one of our friends in Israel, uh, 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 what do you call messianic uh, friend, believer, uh, Jewish believer, but leader, um, in Ashdod. Isn't that the right? Is Ashkat or Ashdod? Ashdod. Ashdod, yeah. It's where the presence of, where the, camp, where the ark was. Remember, it, it, the presence gave the enemy, uh, remember hemorrhoid? Am I right? I'm not, mag- I'm not exaggerating. It, it, I'm not. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so the presence of God gave the enemy hemorrhoids. <laughs> I know what text he's referring to, and no, it wasn't hemorrhoids. Making fun of it, 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 was, it was miserable, right? So the, those guys who held the... How many read the Bible? I'm not, I'm not making this, this is true. Like, like if, you, if you don't lead, yield to the presence, who knows what will happen? I don't guarantee you, I don't know. Might as well worship and... Anyway, these guys did not worship. They're just like, mm, no way, you know. And boom, they got heavy hemorrhoid issues. And so they realized it's... <laughs> so, <laughs> so the people in Ashdod refused to worship. So God gave them heavy hemorrhoid issues. No. <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> That's not how that went down. The text in question is found in 2 Samuel. And we'll note in 2 2 Samuel chapter 5. And in 2 Samuel chapter 4, if you want to read the context, um, the the children of Israel lost a battle against the Philistines. And this was really uh, God's judgment against the high priest and his sons, Hophni and Phinehas, who were formal caboodling with the women at the tabernacle, and and the high priest did nothing to stop them, and so God actually had Samuel, you know, spoke to Samuel, and gave a prophecy that God was going to judge, you know, the, you know, the house of uh, Eli for this sin, and so the Ark of the Covenant was captured in the battle. That you can read that in First Samuel four. Here's what happens, and the Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant and bring it into their territory, bring it into their land, and we'll read what happened. When the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philistines took the Ark of God and brought it up into the house of Dagon and set it beside Dagon. 
Dagon is a, a false god, kind of looks like a merman. He's kind of like a half fish, half man kind of guy. And so when the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the Ark of Yahweh. So they took Dagon, put him back in his place. But when they rose early on the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen face downward on the ground before the Ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both of his hands were lying cut off on the threshold. So much for coexisting, right? Yeah, Yahweh doesn't coexist with false gods. O only the trunk of Dagon was left to him, and this is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. The hand of Yahweh was heavy against the people of Ashdod, and he terrified and afflicted them with, and here's the word, techor, uh, with uh, tumors. That's the actual word, techor, tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, the ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is hard against us and against Dagon, our God. So they sent and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be brought around to Gath. So they brought the ark of the God of Israel there. But afterward, they brought it around. The hand of the Lord was against the city, causing a very great panic. And he afflicted the men of the city, both young and old, so that tumors, uh -huh, techor, uh, broke out on them. And they sent the ark of God to Ekron. But as soon as the Ark of God came to Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out that they had brought around, the, uh, around to us the Ark of God of Israel to kill us and our people. So they sent, therefore, gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the Ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place, that it may not kill us and our people. For there was deathly panic throughout the whole city, and the hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were struck with tumors, not hemorrhoids, and the city of uh, the cry of the city went up to heaven. So that's the story. They ended up sending the ark of God back, and they had and they had made golden rats and golden tumors, uh, you know, as uh, as an offering to God when they sent it back. But uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Georgie and Bonoff uh, is under the belief that. Um, they refused to worship God, and so God gave them heavy hemorrhoid issues. I'm going to back that up just a little bit. Listen again. You know, I mean, we worship everywhere. We worship in, 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 the, in the West Banks. We worship in, 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 a, in inside hospitals where the wounded soldiers in Israel. We worship inside army bases. We do, just like this. Come on. The kingdom of God is invading. Do you know one of our friends in Israel, uh, 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 what do you call messianic uh, friend, believer, uh, Jewish believer, but leader um, in Ashdod. Isn't that the right? Is Ashkat or Ashdod? Ashdod. It's where the presence of, where the, camp, where the ark was. Remember, it, it, the presence gave the enemy, uh, remember hemorrhoid, am I right? I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, it, it, I'm not making fun of it. It, it, was, it was miserable, right? So the, those guys who held the, how many read the Bible? I'm not, I'm not making this, this is true. Like, like if, you, if you don't lead, yield to the presence, who knows what will happen? I don't guarantee you, I don't know. Might as well worship him. Anyway, these guys did not worship. They're just like, and boom, they got heavy hemorrhoid issues. And so they realized it's from that arc of this presence. So they made, made huge hemorrhoid gold like offerings. And then, go, go, go. So they, they released it, right? I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is a Bible story. So there you go. First time ever taught in the history of Christianity and even Judaism, the uh, the story of the heavy 
hemorrhoid issues <laughs> that afflicted the Philistines of Ashdod, Necron, and Gath because of the refusal to, <laughs> to worship the Lord. Yeah, nothing but solid, top-notch biblical scholarship going on there at Bethel Church in Redding, California. What an embarrassment. They need to issue an apology to the entire body of Christ and everybody there for the nonsense that they permit to be spewed forth from their stage. You can't even call that a pulpit. So if you found this helpful, please share the video. All the information on how to share it is down below. Uh, and uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, you can do so. Subscribe and hit the uh, the ring the bell and you'll be notified when we post new videos. All the information on how you can support Pirate Christian Media Financial is also in the description of this video. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ, his vicarious death on the cross, for all of your sins. Amen.